Welcome to part one of our next lesson, which gives an overview of how parallel programs are developed in Java. This part of the lesson will focus on fork join pools, which provide an object-oriented data parallelism framework. The fork join framework defines an object-oriented parallelism model, which provides high-performance, fine-grained task parallelism. It's designed to scale up to processors with many cores. In contrast, the more coarse-grained executor framework was designed for processors with relatively few cores. The focus of the fork join framework is on data parallelism. In particular, data is partitioned across multiple threads and cores, which then operate on that data in parallel. This is very much the embarrassingly parallel model that we talked about earlier, such as the laundromat example, where you put your laundry in different washers or different dryers and have them all run in parallel at the same time with little or no interaction between the processing taking place in the different washers. The way that parallelism is supported with the fork join framework is by solving problems using a divide and conquer technique. You're probably familiar with this from algorithms courses you've taken for various sorting algorithms, such as quick sort or merge sort, which is based on a divide and conquer approach. In the context of the fork join framework, the divide and conquer approach works as follows. Given a problem, if the problem is relatively small, then directly solve the problem and return the results. Otherwise, if the problem is larger, split the problem up into independent parts, say split it in half evenly. Then go ahead and fork new subtasks to solve each of the parts that have been divided up into pieces. While that processing is taking place, then go ahead and wait to join all the subtasks and the sub results coming back from those subtasks. And finally, compose a single reduced result from the sub results and return that as the result of the overall algorithm. So this again is a very common approach. This particular approach, of course, maps to underlying threads and cores in multi-core processors in order to be able to leverage the available parallelism on the platform. Now that we've given a very quick overview of the capabilities in the fork join framework, let's evaluate its pros and cons. We'll start with the pros. So the pros or the benefits of the fork join framework are the following. First and foremost, it's very clever in how it applies something called work stealing in order to maximize the utilization of the multiprocessor cores. In particular, what happens is there's a pool of threads and each thread has a queue known as a deck, a double-ended queue. And each of the worker threads in the fork join pool will process work that's on its deck or on its queue. However, if a thread gets to the point where it has no more work in its deck, then it will go ahead and look around randomly at decks that are managed by other worker threads and try to steal work from the end of their decks. And that way it can continue to do processing without having to block and sleep, which is very disruptive and very inefficient on modern multi-core processors. So one of the key capabilities and benefits of using this framework is leveraging work stealing. And you can read more about work stealing in the paper in the link at the bottom of the slide. Another benefit is something that's known as the common fork join pool, which is a singleton effectively that enables all the utilization of the different cores to be managed through one set of queues. And one of the neat things about the common fork join pool is it can be expanded automatically. The number of worker threads in the pool can be expanded using something known as the managed blocker mechanism. And we'll talk about managed blockers later when we talk about the fork join pool in more detail. But these are some of the powerful features that come by using this particular technique for doing object-oriented data parallelism in Java. Again, not everything is rainbows and unicorns, so there are some cons or some downsides to using this framework. In particular, it can be somewhat tedious and error-prone to program relative to alternatives. And we'll summarize the alternatives here in a moment. For example, it uses what's known as a white box object-oriented design based on subclassing from a common superclass, in this case known as the fork join task. And so you have to do inheritance and you have to do overriding and just a little bit cumbersome and uh, perhaps more work than you really need to do if you were to use modern techniques. And that's the other limitation here is that because the fork join framework occurred prior to the introduction of modern functional programming features in Java, which came in Java 8 and beyond, it doesn't have good support for things like Lambda expressions or method references and so on. So it's just a little bit more tedious and error prone to program compared to what we'll be talking about later, which are the Java parallel functional programming frameworks, 
These would include things like parallel streams and completable futures. Both of these parallel frameworks in Java that use functional parallelism encapsulate the object-oriented parallelism that's part and parcel of what's provided by the fork join pool. So you can still leverage all of its school optimizations and work stealing and ability to grow and, and extra, expand and so on under different circumstances. However, by using these later features that we'll talk about next, you can actually hide all the low level details of white box object oriented reuse behind a much cleaner black box functional interface. So that's the end of part one of our lesson on how parallel programs are developed in Java.